this is biotechnica and you're listening to india's first life science podcast the voice of biotechnica in our daily life we come across many people often i wonder what exactly is going on in the mind of so many different people surprisingly it reminds me of a famous quote by h.w longfellow Every man has his secret sorrows which the world knows not and often times we call a man cold when he is only sad Now that might sound like the man has depression but is it so In that case all of us end up having one right or is the condition analogous to the jaundice eye i wonder although information on this topic is immense but mental health is something less discussed among all other illness so today we try to analyze this aspect of our life which we often ignore or aren't aware of even many of us assume more than what it really is in the current busy world are we all depressed or it's just a myth let's try to find out in today's podcast is depression being overdiagnosed presented by biotechnica team member sunita depression is a serious mood disorder which has quite common occurrence it is characterized by persistently low mood and a feeling of sadness and a loss of interest depressive disorders affect large numbers of children adolescents middle age groups and the elderly both men and women Usually the symptoms are quite severe that can affect daily activities such as walking, sleeping, eating, etc. Moreover, it can also affect the way one thinks or feels. These in turn lead to loss of productivity, increased healthcare costs, and significant emotional sufferings. There are some signs and symptoms of depression like depressed mood, reduced interest or pleasure in activities previously enjoyed, irritability, helplessness, low appetite, insomnia that is difficulty in sleeping or hypersomnia, excessive sleeping, fatigue or loss of energy, feeling of worthlessness or guilt and recurrent thoughts of death. or suicide even attempted suicide along with all these some even show physical symptoms such as a unintentional weight loss without dieting psychomotor agitation in form of restlessness pacing up and down and delayed psychomotor skills for example slowed movement and speech Many complain of aches or pains, headaches, cramps, or digestive problems without a clear physical cause, or that do not ease even with treatment. Often, depression is linked to suicide. In worst cases, it can lead to deliberate self-harm or suicide. Thus, it becomes very essential to identify depression at an early stage. so as the chances of suicide can be reduced based on all this we can see that the nature severity and frequency of symptoms vary from person to person and even depend on the stage of illness so everyone may not experience all the symptoms at all some even show a few of mentioned symptoms which might be too much severe Thus merely having one or two symptoms doesn't mean it's a depression because of the variation in pattern and onset it can be further classified into different types for example persistent depressive disorder postpartum depression 
psychotic depression, seasonal affective disorder, etc. The causes of depression are several, including biological, social, economic, and cultural, and environmental factors. More often, it is a combination of many factors that can lead to depression. As such, the onset is commonly seen around adulthood in majority of the cases, but it is now recognized to be occurring in children and adolescents as well. The symptoms might be different in these cases. Generally, it is manifested in form of prominent irritability and high anxiety. In older adults, depression is both a cause and a consequence of several non-communicable diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and Parkinson's disease. It is found in such cases these conditions become worse if depression is present. Even certain medicines can cause side effects which can contribute to depression. Other causes are found to be substance use disorders and nutritional disorders. It is also adversely associated with chronic communicable diseases like TB, HIV and others. Some of the risk factors which make a person susceptible towards depression are number 1. Life events such as bereavement, divorce, stressful relationship, work issues, financial problem or acute stress. People with traumatic past life experience, that is the second reason. Third, genetic factors like having first degree relatives with depression. Fourth, medication including corticosteroids, beta blockers, interferons, etc. Fifth, abuse of recreational drugs such as alcohol, amphetamines, etc. Sixth, a past head injury. Seventh, a past episode of major depression. And finally, eighth, chronic conditions like diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and cardiovascular disease. Now whatever be the cause, the outcome is quite taxing from personal, emotional, economic and social scenario and has an impact on the overall quality of life. It is seen that people with depression often face discrimination at personal and professional front. They are stigmatized and excluded by family and society. Since the working efficiency of an affected person might decrease, it can have huge and unmeasured economic impact. Now imagine, one person affected, it is detrimental to a family. But majority of population affected, it is detrimental for a nation overall. Thus, it becomes very important to address the issue at the earliest by strengthening of healthcare system, early detection, continuous monitoring and removal of stigma by bringing social awareness. If we focus on the treatment, many ways are available. The usual choice of treatment is based on the severity and type and can range from self-help to brain stimulation. Usually a combination therapy is followed involving counseling, cognitive behavioral therapy, interpersonal therapy, psychodynamic psychotherapy along with medications like antidepressant, lithium, etc. Severe conditions which fail to respond to all other treatment require brain stimulation in form of transcranial direct current stimulation, repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation and electroconvulsive therapy. Now coming to the most difficult part that is diagnosis. As such, there is no test like blood test to detect depression. 
It is mainly because the symptoms vary a lot. So developing an absolute diagnostic test is not possible or may yet to be done. Most of the cases, symptoms are monitored, complete history of the patient is taken, and even physical examination and other tests are performed to rule out the chances of other diseases. The doctor or a mental health professional carries out a mental health assessment, which is a detailed and comprehensive interview. It includes questions about symptoms and their impact on work, relationship, any previous episode, drug and alcohol use, medical condition and family history. Along with this, it is equally important to assess the risk of suicide or self-harm. The patient might be asked to keep a daily record of mood, sleep patterns or other activities that may help with the diagnosis. Further, feedback might be obtained from family members and close friends about the patient's symptoms. From all this, we can understand there can be biases involving diagnosis of depression. According to a study conducted at John Hopkins University, many cases of overdiagnosis have surfaced. Over 5,000 adults participated in the study, mainly those who have been diagnosed with depression by a clinician. In this study, the same people were independently assessed for major depressive episodes using a structured interview, which is nothing but a face-to-face -face interview following the set standard. The outcome of the study was very surprising and gave a completely different outlook to condition. Out of 5,000 or so, only a minority, approximately 38.4% met all the official diagnostic criteria for depression. So rest of the people were not having any such severe problem, yet, irrespective of their actual condition, all of them were prescribed and were using psychiatric medication. This study clearly indicates the casual nature of depression assessment procedure being followed presently. Many cases, the person diagnosing the condition might not be qualified enough to carry out comprehensive structured interviews. Even on some occasions, many mental health professionals also go for such informal assessment rather than recommended comprehensive psychiatric interview, the latter being a very time-consuming process. Such hasty, informal and intuition-based assessment leads to error in diagnosis. A low threshold for diagnosing clinical depression risks treating normal emotional states as illness, challenges the assessment credibility and raises the risk of inappropriate management. Perhaps we should reconstruct the assessment criteria and threshold but it has its own cons. Redefining of assessment threshold might lead to underdiagnosis. Anything not fulfilling the criteria might not be considered at all. In such cases of minor depression persistent symptoms, if not detected and treated early, latter might lead to a full-blown serious depression in future. On the other hand, increased diagnosis may not be that bad. It has benefit of early detection and timely treatment. Most major mental disorders start before the age of 25 years, which can affect the lifetime productivity and quality of life. Early treatment can stop the condition from worsening into secondary medical, health, educational and social comorbidity. Moreover, it can reduce social stigma, increase wider public awareness and remove any structural impediments to employment and health benefits, as well as reduce alcohol and drug misuse. 
So after all, what we understand that people are divided either in, for or against the topic. But there is one more aspect that needs to be considered before we draw any conclusion. Now, what is the missing point? The missing point is not about overdiagnosis, but it is more about overprescription. Do all patients really need the antidepressants? With the current trend of boom in pharmaceuticals, many drugs are being marketed. And physicians as well as patients have a notion that taking medication might be the most effective way of treatment. But most of the cases, it may not be so. Meta-analysis of patient groups under antidepressant drugs over other psychotherapies and placebo showed minimal differences. These differences are more unclear when we consider minor depression. So rethinking the treatment procedure is also the need of R, where including other psychotherapies rather than just prescribing antidepressant would be a better option. Clearly, reformations are needed in many aspects of diagnosis, treatment and social perspective. The onus of the change lies with the physicians, mental health professionals, care providers, drug manufacturers and even the patients. On the whole, the society needs to reform itself for the greater good. With this note, I am signing off today. But do let us know what are your views on this topic. Where? Do you stand?